Hey, hey, welcome to episode 166 <clears throat> of the Titan Forge podcast. I'm Dranos <laughs> with a mid intro throat clearing and uh, joined by Tettles and Trell. Yo, hola. What up? And special guest this week is the one and only Elsmere, healer for ambition and BDGG, as his Twitter profile says. Hello, welcome, uh, welcome, Elsmere. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So this week, we are going to talk with you about affixes is going to be the big topic, because that's something that you've been talking about. I wouldn't say so much recently, it's because it's kind of been something you've been on for a while, right? I've seen, I remember seeing the forum post from you uh, a year ago or something. Yeah, I uh, I wrote a fair amount about affixes during beta, because I was hoping that there would be some more serious changes to affixes coming into Dragonflight, but we will hope for that next expansion. <laughs> Dude, okay. I'm really surprised. Okay, whenever Mythic Plus was first introduced, I thought that we were going to get new affixes every single expansion. That was actually something that I maybe falsely assumed um, during Legion we were just going to get brand new affixes every single expansion because it seemed like they were designed to be replaced, but then they just never were. Well, we did get new ones in Shadowlands, right? We got Spiteful, Storming, and Inspiring. Sure. We we got some new ones, but a, a few new affixes added to the pool over three expansions is I, I wouldn't exactly say was what we were expecting from affixes. I, similar to Tettles, was definitely expecting affixes to be something that was like majorly reworked or overhauled every expansion to keep Mythic Plus new and fresh. Um, or at least I assumed that they would because legion uh affixes you know that was the first time we ever had mythic plus so it felt like they were experimenting not like this is going to be the thing that we have for three expansions you know it felt like that was like the starting point and then we've just kind of stayed at that starting point and haven't built on it or expanded it as much as i've wanted us to really uh get out of the affix system there hasn't been as much creativity and, and change in the system as a whole really since its inception which was like six seven years ago yeah. a while yeah that just made me realize it's been this is the fourth expansion with quaking and sanguine and yep all the standard affixes we've always had yeah a lot of them have undergone changes since legions although sanguine it's kind of you remember legion sanguine legion sanguine like took five seconds to spawn and was like a tiny little circle yeah yeah i mean they bu they buffed it they buffed then sanguine they then they but nerfed the healing on it, but yeah. They they kind of nuked... They changed the duration. They nuked, like, bolstering... Oh, yeah, they did change the duration of Sanguine down to 20 seconds from 60. Yeah. Yeah, 60 seconds Sanguine was something else, man. Do you remember, remember Waycrest Manor? Sanguine? Waycrest Manor, you would just, like... You'd drop one in the pig room <laughs> under where the pig would be or whatever, and it was just oh, over. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> affixes have only ever universally been, like, nerfed. <laughs> I don't... Except Aside from the, the Sanguine buff, yeah. Except for the Sanguine one change one time ever, they have never been buffed. They have almost universally been nerfed. Bursting's been buffed and nerfed like 17 times. Well, it's, been, it it's, been it's, it's been rebalanced, I think, to, depending on like how healers are healing that specific expansion. But I, think, I mean, even if you look at it like that, it's almost strictly been nerfed by the ability to be able to dispel it. True. Yeah. So they have done. they have done a lot of like tweaks to the affixes right bolstering duration bolstering not affecting bosses grievous removing a stack when you direct heal someone quaking not damaging you if you don't quake anybody do you remember remember when quaking was just a 20 percent of your health tax every time it popped it, explosive hp you remember there was one yeah. class in the game one class no one spec not even one class one spec in the game that could kill explosives it was a fucking outlaw rogue and yet it is still the same largely the same set of affixes that we've had all along right like yes. with the the few new ones in we've seen like overflowing go i guess inspiring and necrotic have gone right now um so yeah that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about affixes in general uh and i guess where we should start with is whether affixes should exist at all this has been a, a take that sometimes there's the there's the take of just go back to challenge modes right no no need for affixes um potentially no need for even tyran fort or stuff so here's a here's a 
reply we got on our tweet. Do you guys actually feel like the affixes other than tyrannical, fortified, and seasonal affixes are necessary now that we have a seasonal dungeon rotation? Is asking new players to learn how to deal with affixes and their interactions with a whole new set of dungeons too much? So I guess let's take a, take opinions on this so we can kind of get a baseline of where everybody's at. Like, in general, affixes good or bad to have? Like just the rotational ones, or what do you? Yeah, so non and fortified. Let's leave out tyrannical, fortified, and seasonals, which we will talk about. But let's the the rows four and seven, level four and seven affixes. Would should they uh, go stay or like only stay if changed? So for me, it's like affixes kind of exist to enhance the experience in M plus just generally, and I, and I would say that over the course of what was it the fourth expansion that we've had affixes and M plus in general, I would say that they have kind of enhanced the experience that I've had in M plus. Um, I think, I think that they've done good things. There is pretty much since M plus has been released. There've been people who have been saying that affixes should be deleted. And you should just be fighting the dungeon itself. And affixes don't really have a state in the a place in the game. I, I don't generally believe that. I actually think that affixes do the job, do their job of keeping the dungeons um, unique every single week, and and you you're not just grinding full season long against either only tyrannical and fortified in like a seasonal affix because I feel like that would become increasingly boring in a completely different way if if there were no swapping up of uh, weeks. And in addition to that, like you would only start playing in plus once you really got geared up, as opposed to now where you're kind of, you kind of play for fun sometimes and then you play play a little bit more competitively. Others it just kind of depends on what's going on that week. What do you think, Elsmere? Are you on the are, are you on board to remove both rows of the rotationals, or are you like me, where I kind of want to just see one row go? Yeah, I <clears throat> I think that in general, affixes. I I agree with Tettles that affixes have done their job, but the question is, have they done it well? Could it have been done better um, by a different system? In in my opinion, definitely yes. I think that they they do what they're supposed to do, but a lot of times in a more negative than positive way. Um, and part of that is due to just how out of hand affixes have gotten between two weekly affixes plus seasonal plus tyrannical and fortified, and then now new dungeons every single season. So yeah. Mm -hmm. with with four affixes in a weekly rotation and new dungeons happening every season and with you know blizzard having a fairly aggressive goal with putting out new seasons uh in a faster pace than we have had in the past i think that the need for that much variation on a week-to-week -week basis has diminished significantly uh and at this point is more of a strain and something that's making mythic plus more frustrating than it is fun I will um, say that we sometimes on the show kind of miss the perspective of like more casual players or people who don't play as much. And I do think that affixes are actually something that would cause more of a strain on like casual players or people who don't play as much in the sense of like, you have to learn the affixes a lot, right? And if you, and if you haven't been playing the dungeons a lot, just think about on, on one hand, it kind of, it kind of en enhances the experience in like a 15 and it really makes the dungeon feel unique. But at the same point, you have to battle against, okay, so like let's use explosive for example, explosive is such an interactive affix that if you're not playing it and you're perfect, even in like a 15 or whatever, you're going to get punished heavily. And that that to me feels like it's too punishing towards more casual players who are just, you know, playing a couple dungeons a week for fun. Whereas obviously we know how to deal with the affixes. We've been playing for four years. Well, I think that an interesting thing about this season is they've finally done this thing where they've mostly gotten rid of like push weeks, right? Weeks yeah. where you can play with minimal affix investment. And high level players would concentrate most of their dungeon running into these push weeks in previous expansions, right? And so, like, high level players basically got to play without super impactful affixes for many of their, maybe even most of their dungeons in previous expansions and seasons. Whereas, you know, less more people that are just playing, you know, the same kind of amount of M plus each week, maybe five dungeons casually with friends in the 10 to 15 level, they've kind of always had this experience where a lot of the weeks are really affix intensive. But on the other hand, when the key level is lower, especially, you know, if you're if you're somebody who's like 410 plus doing a doing an 11 key or something like that, like you have a lot of 
gear covering any mistake on an affix, right? Whereas if you're playing the dungeon at a level where like each ability is going to do 80% of your health, like one mistake against an affix is going to kill you, right? And that's, Absolutely. I think, always been the the reason why you, you usually see more complaints about affixes from the higher end players than the lower end ones, because the lower end ones are often doing these these keys at a level where it's sort of being out geared. So, like the, the damage numbers incoming at least are not necessarily out geared, but they're at the point where some affix damage on top isn't just going to kill you if you make a mistake. It's just going to mean that, you know, you're scared. Uh, and it's weird because I, I feel like the same, I feel like I felt like with Prideful where Prideful was really fun in weekly 15s, right? Like you're doing a weekly 15 with your guild. Yeah. You're like, smashing through a lot of content and then like you spawn a prideful and that thing is four key levels higher or whatever in the rest of the dungeon and that's like fun in a 15 when you're a little bit over gearing it uh but then you're trying to do like a 20 23 key or something and a prideful spawns and it just takes over the dungeon and similarly like you know the, the quaking thundering overlaps this season uh have felt have have reminded me of that where it's just like man this is nasty or raging in some dungeons like raging Shaw and Temple, you're just like ah, this is like what all it's the all, about. all the small smallies that rage, yeah. Yeah. and then all the exploders. Yeah, either you have an evoker or you die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, to a certain extent, I agree with you, but I also will say that this season, more than any before, I have heard more vocal, casual players. Uh, talking about affixes and their frustration with affixes than I think I ever have before. And I think part of that may have to do with the removal of those easy weeks because I think even casual players did lean more heavily into M plus during those weeks uh, and kind of just didn't play as much during those off weeks. I know that was a heavy thing for, for higher high keyers, but from what I was seeing within the community, um, having those weeks just made affixes feel a little less burdensome because you were like, well, these affixes suck, but there's always next week or the week after. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I think part of the reason that we've had so much, uh, so many people being more vocal about affixes this season is two things. One, thundering is a very punishing affix, yeah, even absolutely. in pugs. Yes. Um, and it also has many interactions with mechanics and even other affixes like quaking um that are kind of counterintuitive like needing to spread and bow stack at the same time um yeah and i think that's been a big source of frustration for players and then the other part is that with the removal of those weeks every week kind of feels difficult like every week the affixes never get easier so you never have like a break from the oh god you know this week sucks because it's just next week sucks too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess getting back to the question, should affixes exist? I, I, I do think that affixes enhance, at least for me personally, enhance my experience in the dungeons. I do think that they have, you know, like, like we kind of talked about a little bit, gone a bit over the line in terms of how impactful they are in dungeons. And that's obviously just my opinion. Not everybody shares the exact same opinion on affixes um, in, in regards to like how impactful or, or um, less impactful you think that they should be. It's kind of up for debate, right? Because like, for me, I think I think that they're a bit too over the line this expansion. And the longer that we played, the more it's just kind of like reaffirmed that because I, I noticed for me it was like I, I hit a moment where I'm like, oh my god, thank god it's not last week. Oh my god, I hate it. I hate that it's this week. And and the <laughs> and the point that I hit that, I was like, Whoa, wow, affixes are really killing my vibe. Yeah. And we're the most experienced players. Like imagine yeah. people just learning these dungeons and they get to level 10. It's at 10, by the way, and all of a sudden they have all these extra things on top of new dungeons, and it's like extremely overwhelming, especially with how dungeon design has been going, where even the old dungeons now have very difficult groups of mobs and lots of kicks and stops that are needed in every pack. So on top of that, I think the thundering emphasis plus two rows of affixes is extremely hard. Yeah. Uh, do, do you guys think that affixes should continue to stay, though? Like, Or do you think that it's something that needs to be like, oh my gosh, we need to really read think how we're looking at dungeons i think it's both i think for now affixes should stay um i do think that the way that they should so there's a there's a couple solutions that you could do with fixing affixes currently um the the best solution that i've thought of uh and i know trell mentioned it as well is that removing one of the weekly affixes would remove 
ninety percent of the like really difficult overlaps that you, that occur that make affixes so frustrating currently in this season. Um, so if we only had seasonal plus fort slash tyrannical and then one weekly affix, that would yeah. be a really good band aid to get us through until we could, you know, do a more significant overhaul of affixes. Because there's no way we're gonna see the entire affix system redesigned mid expansion. That's just not happening. Right. Yeah. That's so realistic. yeah. So we, we're definitely gonna have to like wait until the next expansion, where hopefully we'll get some more serious and significant overhauling of the entire system and mythic plus in general um but for now for now i think the best way to to kind of band-aid this is just removing one of those weekly things which would cut out a lot of those overlaps i will say that i think that we may have been giving bad feedback in the past where we were just cl calling for nerfs to specific affixes <laughs> Because now the affixes are pretty balanced, and it's still there's a still a problem with affixes. It's not just like one or two. I mean, it what? it's better than it would have been if bolstering still hit bosses, right? Yeah, 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 yeah sure. I exactly. mean, yeah. think yeah. about if if some of those things weren't nerfed, like <laughs> oh my god, unreal. God, yes, they'd be ten times and... worse. Mm -hmm. That is true. <laughs> I think I think Elsmere is right though. This is a new ish problem. I mean, it is kind of a problem, but now it's really magnified because of how impactful thundering is and. That there's new dungeons and that's kind of like why everybody's been talking about it recently and and it's only three months in the expansion and everybody's pretty active about talking about this one yeah yeah but the problem is we're not going to get what we had in previous expansions where like by the second or third season everyone knew the dungeons so well that no one really cared about affixes anymore right uh you know now in a couple months we're gonna have a brand new set of mythic plus dungeons and we're gonna have to relearn all of them again a new seasonal affix on top of that which we're also gonna have to learn so that's yeah that's definitely going to just start all of this back up again even if by a month or two from now we we start you know everybody gets in the flow it's just going to be taken away yeah yeah and I, th I think that's like the part of this tweet that does kind of resonate is like if we're in a world of every season has 75 to 100 percent of the dungeons are new relative to last season right and it's like yeah i i do think that there's room for less mental loads to land on the affixes if you're going to have dungeons having that that degree of like novelty each season as well yeah that being said do you do you like okay. the dungeon rotation by the way elsmere i i do i think that the dungeons rotating is a good idea it, it's going to keep mythic plus really fresh throughout the expansion we're not going to get just totally because i mean think about by the end of every expansion how sick of you or how sick of those dungeons were you? Like, Very. I was <laughs> oh, so, so exhausted sick. of yeah. Shadowlands. Same thing in BFA. Even Legion, with how good Legion M Plus was, by the end of it, I was like, I need something new, you know? This is right. getting a little bit boring running Moss Souls for the 483,000th time. Um, the only thing I'll say regarding the, the dungeon rotation, which I know isn't exactly the topic that we're discussing today, but just to quickly go off on a tangent... Um, the old dungeons need to be balanced and recreated a bit better compared to the new dungeons. Because the problem right now is there is a huge gap between dungeon design in modern WoW and like the, the new fresh dungeons that we're getting now, and then the old dungeons. There, it's just the play style and design of these dungeons are so wildly different that it doesn't feel very good going into a Court of Stars or a Shadow Moon Burial Grounds and like everything, you can just turn your brain off and pull one pack at a time and it's super easy. And then you walk into Knock Hood the next minute or, you know, Ruby Light Pools or whatever, and every mob has 40 different things to interrupt and stop. And it's insanely yeah. dangerous and does a billion damage. I, I super agree. And I think it's good we're talking about this in this episode because this is where our opinions originate based on this kind of thing. And uh, so like that in mind, would you rather the new dungeons be taken back more in advance or would you rather the Ooh. old ones be buffed more to match the new dungeons Whew. that's a tough topic to address i don't think necessarily that most of it comes down to throughput like i don't mind if stuff does a lot of damage for example first boss in shadow moon or you know second boss of court on tyrannical like i think it's good having you know heavy healing checks and stuff like that so when I say that I want things to be more difficult or easier, it doesn't really have to do with throughput. It has to do with mechanics. Mechanics, yeah. So the, me the mechanics of new dungeons, I think, are a little out of hand. I think, yes. <laughs> uh, I think, I think mobs shouldn't have 
so many constant interrupts and stops. Like for example, the the mob that uh, spams Cinderbolt and Ruby Life Pools, or uh, the the mobs that in Knockhood that you have to do like three separate t kinds of stops on just to prevent them from one shotting your group. A lot of different mobs in these dungeons are stocked full of dangerous different abilities that people really aren't going to have time to learn within this one season limited window. Um, you know, especially given that most players don't play Mythic Plus constantly the way that higher Mythic Plus players do. Sure. You know, for, for the higher end community, it's a lot easier because, you know, we're playing 40 hours a week or whatever. But for somebody who's just <laughs> walking, oh, you know, that's just, I mean, it depends on the player. But I'm just saying, the higher end community definitely has people who are playing significantly more. And so when you compare that to a, a more casual player who only steps into their weekly keys, learning all of these different abilities and what these mobs do is not is not really easy and isn't going to come super quickly. Yeah. Dennis, I have a question. How have you liked uh, Temple of the Jade Serpent and Halls of Valor specifically as brought back old dungeons relative? Because I think that people talk about brought back old dungeons, they just immediately say Court of Stars and Shadow Moon. Yeah, because it's interesting because those two are the ones that are like way too easy, right? Uh, and have way too many like nothing pulls. I feel like Halls of Valor really hit the mark for me. Like I've I've been loving doing Halls of Valor runs. I feel like there's difficult pulls, but there's opportunities to you know combine and go big. There's difficult bosses, but they're Herja maybe has a little that still feels unfair sometimes. But the other ones are like, and even Herja, there's a lot of counterplay, right? I don't know. I think that I, I, I think, think that dungeon's sweet. I think Halls did land in a good spot. Yeah, I, I, the only crap I have about Halls and it's not to do with mechanics. I think mechanics landed in a great spot. But the only thing is, like, animations on the frontals of, like, the shield maidens. Yeah. That could have been improved. Yeah. That's, like, sure. a whole other thing. I, yeah. But, that's like, that's the same point. thing with, like, uh, deadly thrusts in halls, you know? Yeah. They, they've halls had, they've yeah. had frontals like that a lot in the past. That's um, true. Yeah. That's where you need yeah. the gun one sound every time <laughs> it starts getting cast. <laughs> you know, this is this is a huge tangent, but I've been practicing for MDI Less Stand, and I, I actually told my group yesterday to use the Ellesmere sound for a mechanic because you will never miss it. <laughs> you really details, won't. <laughs> details gun one. Dude, I am a, I am a lover of the telephone ringing. Oh, mm. that one's good too. That one is so, yeah. so fucking annoying. <laughs> for my, for my like super important dispels, I always use that. It's effective though. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think Halls was really good the, the way that they brought it back. It was, it's definitely my favorite old dungeon. Um, and I think part of that is like, like you mentioned, the pulls can be difficult if you choose to, they, they also can be easier, but like when you pull these big packs, right, there's a mix of casters and of just tank busters. So the tank has to do their work to not die, but sure. the DPS don't have to worry about interrupting six different things. You know, there's like one caster that heals that you have to interrupt. And then one that has, you know, the rune carver that you have to interrupt. And that's pretty much it. You know, and then you can choose to pull in the thunder dude as well. And then if you do, obviously that complicates the pull a bit and you have to worry about kicks a little bit more. But in general, the packs by themselves inherently do not have massive amounts of stops that are required and like huge amounts of coordination. Well, funnily enough, those packs did used to. Like if you if you look at old Halls of Valor, every single pull had multiple uh like had a thunder collar and a mystic in it, like almost at minimum. And then yeah. some of them also had a rune carver on top of that. And you're like, what the hell is this pack supposed to do? They they actually rebalanced a lot of the trash and halls. And I thought it made the dungeon more enjoyable for it. Yeah. As for Temple, though, I actually kind of disagree with Dratnos. I don't mind Temple. I There are obviously some outliers in Temple. But like if you take most of Temple, it's the same concept, right? You can make the pulls more difficult. Or like the packs inherently by themselves, there aren't a ton of things that you really have to worry about. Like there's the big AOE heal on the Wise Mari side, um, and then the the one caster in each pack, you know, except for that one where there's two casters and then the big guy. That one requires a little bit more coordination. But in general, most of the dungeon is laid out in a way that you're not going to have to worry about coordinating kicks very significantly up until you hit the Shaw room at the end. Uh, With the new that trash that was added, that, yeah. that new trash is is a little sketchy, I will say. Yeah, the left pull. <laughs> I don't know. I I also don't like the emphasis it puts on like uh, the curse to spell is is something that I yes. don't like how impactful that is in that place. But yeah, yeah. I, I do think there's 
good concepts in there as well. Yeah. yeah. Required decurses um, and things like that have been a big problem for a while. And I know that's something that they were kind of addressing um, when we talked about it in previous expansions, like in Halls of Atonement, for example, the like required decurse that you needed in order to basically even do that dungeon. Yeah. And then there, I think there was... Uh, Plaguefall Disease. Oh, there was Plaguefall Disease. There was something in uh, the other Plaguefall Dungeon. Tem- Wait, uh, Temple? Theater. Theater. Oh, theater pan? Yeah. Oh, there yeah, was something theater. in Theater. I don't remember what. I already forgot which dungeon was where. Yeah. Yeah. Shadowlands. I just blocked out all of Shadowlands as soon as we left. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that, repressed. That shit, that shit is also just gone. Yeah. All right. I want to circle back to something that, for those of you that have been following Mythic Plusers complaining about Mythic Plus for a long time, you'll remember an arc that we had for several years of Delete Tyrannical that uh, was kind of one of the most common things said by Mythic Plusers. For most of BFA back then, that was so true, bad. Yeah, for yeah. A while. but I feel like it's not something you hear very much anymore. In fact, if you look at a lot of these responses, they they're kind of like, "Hey, let's leave Fortified and Tyrannical in, and then do this other stuff." How do you guys feel about Fortified and Tyrannical and their impact on dungeons? Uh, obviously, Tyrannical has taken a series of nerfs throughout throughout Shadowlands, and also they added. I think the biggest sleeper buff to people enjoying Tyrannical is the fact you just need to do it for score, and so. You know, you're comparing yeah. your tyrannical <laughs> runs against your tyrannical runs instead of against your fortified runs, uh, which made it, I guess, a lot better as well. Uh, do you guys think that fortified and tyrannical do a good job of making the dungeons feel like differently textured, or is it meaning that we are always doing half of the dungeon on easy mode and then only half of the dungeons like mattering? I my opinion has remained completely unchanged on tyrannical and fortified. I do not think that they should exist. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Tyrannical, my biggest problem is that dungeon bosses in general are just not interesting enough to warrant us fighting them for five minutes. Like, yeah. <laughs> the bosses are too mechanically simplistic um, to be fighting as long as you fight Dathia or, you know, a, an actual raid boss. And that's what's happening in a lot of these dungeons. You, you have six minutes that you spend on Krogma where you're just AFK attacking a training dummy, basically. And I, to me, that, that that is not interesting. Go ahead, Tettles. What's up? I was going to say, so there, there is an issue where, like, Tyrannical, historically, for at least, like, lower-end keys, has been significantly easier for a lot of players than Fortified. For, like, the... I mean, even right now, I would say, if you're doing a key that's below, you know, 15, um, I would rather play on Tyran, because you can just absolutely stomp the trash and then you have infinite yeah. time and then like the tyrannical bosses especially in a 15 or whatever aren't going to be long enough to where you know you're getting to the the eighth sonic screech on croth or something like that and you have to like cycle through defensives perfectly it, it i think that there, there is an issue too that it, this is just a top level player issue where tyrannical and fortified are so very polarizing um but i i think it's just like how the scaling is going to work it just increases the ability for things to have potential to break. But to me, that's also... Uh, hmm, I don't know, because to me, that just says that Fortified should be gone too. Because I don't think that you should ever be playing where half of the dungeon is super, super easy, and the other half is, you know, boring slash difficult uh, or long. And then the next week... It's the complete opposite. I get that it's like trying to make the dungeons more interesting week to week, yeah. but in reality, all it's doing is making it so that you breeze through trash on tyrannical weeks, and then bosses are ob- obnoxious, and then on fortified weeks, you struggle on trash, and then you breeze through the bo- bosses, and they're you know super easy. I do think that the length of trash on fortified weeks feels significantly better than the length of trash on tyrannical weeks. It normally ends up making the dungeons feel like. On Tyran, for some reason, you just do your whole entire rotation on the pack, and the pack dies before you're even done, like doing your burst in a lot of situations. Whereas on uh, Fortified Weeks, it really feels like that trash has enough oomph to it to where you're able to kind of get your damage out. But that's why I don't understand the whole concept of Fortified and Tyrannical in the first place, because yeah. basically what we're saying is like, Fortified, it's not quite there because the, the trash lasts a little too long, or Tyrannical, it's not quite there because the boss lasts a little too long. And it's like, if you just remove them, then you would have the perfect 
level of difficulty for the entire dungeon. The bosses and trash would be equally difficult. The whole dungeon would be engaging. I, and I, I, I don't know. I just don't think that there's enough of a reason to keep them around in an already infinitely scaling system. Because a lot of people's argument to like tyrannical is, you know, how are we going to make this like w this boss won't be difficult anymore, you know, or this trash won't be difficult anymore sure. without fortified. But it, the system is already built to infinitely scale. So eventually yeah, to... everything will be hard. You will hit that yeah. same point. Like if you're fighting a 26 tyrannical, if you're doing a 28 with no tyrannical, the boss is going to be just as difficult as the 26 with tyrannical. So but they would have 30% less health probably, which is, but I think that's a that good would be thing. perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I would like that. Because then, like, the bosses will still not just drag on forever. Like, yeah. I, I remember the first... <laughs> I went into Tazavesh, um, like, a month or a couple weeks after Race World first finished uh, in Sepulchre. And I was fighting the last boss, and I screenshotted the last boss, uh, which was, like, 7 minutes and 30 seconds or something uh, on, like, a 26. And then I compared that with Halandris, and we it, like Halandris <laughs> actually was a shorter boss during progression than than you know that boss that literally had two mechanics that you just repeated over and over and over again. So that's the kind of thing that I really would like to see removed um, from Mythic Plus in general, which removing Tyrannical would fix. Yeah. I do think there are some bosses where it's much more egregious than others. Like, if you're doing, like, a tyrannical bone maw, you really are like, oh, wow, this is... This is bad. But, you know, the Al like, the Algathar bosses, I think some of them do have a, a degree of, like, hey, tyrannical is turning this into, like, a... You know, an encounter where we're going to see extra overlaps and we're, we're going to be tested and, and, like, having to build ourselves into, like, a a single target damage and a single target survivability uh, build this week, whereas on Fortified Weeks we don't have to. I do I do think there's some, there is some value brought by that tyrannical Fortified, you know, shift each week in terms of how how you have to attack the dungeon. But yeah, I'm not I, sure it's I better than just having the key level do that work. Because if the key level was higher, but it was balanced between every week, I don't know, maybe that, maybe that would just be better. But I think you would lose a little something there. I think I think Elismir's point actually makes a lot of sense to me because I I, I actually feel very similar to you, Dretness, where I don't I don't really mind Fortified and Tyrannical this expansion. I've I felt kind of okay just about them as a whole, but it uh if it, it's definitely in a spot where if the if the system is infinitely scaling, like Elismir pointed out, and I think that that's like a a pretty big point to consider as well. I I have, I agree with both sides. I think the Tyrannical has landed in a good spot, like we said. But the just concept of it is still a burden on scaling, like Ellesmere said. And I, I would like to see like some kind of balance, but I don't know if I'd want to see. Well, maybe we should ask Ellesmere this: like, would you rather see fortified tyrannical taken away or one of the rotational rows? Which one would be more important in your eyes? If I had the option right now, it would yeah. probably mm -hmm. be one of the rotational. I, I would I do think, the same. Yeah. Yeah, I think that fortified and tyrannical should be gone, but in this band-aided system that we would be creating where we would just remove one of the weekly affixes, I think you would at least need to keep Fortified and Tyrannical around for now until the affix overhaul that hopefully will happen during beta of next expansion. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like in the immediate, I think the more important thing is removing, uh, removing those weekly affixes or at least one set of them so that they don't have as many uh, terrible overlaps and yeah, one thing I'll maybe. mention, too, that I dislike about Tyrannical is that a lot of the times the difficulty of Tyrannical lands on the healers. Um, because even though the fights are longer, the mechanics and how DPS play the fight is pretty much exactly the same. So the major it's, It just is longer. That's all it is. But everything changes for a healer on Tyrannical because of how the damage scaling of those bosses works. And certain bosses become really, really, really difficult on tyrannical weeks. And pretty much all of that tyrannical affix's difficulty is funneled into the healer specifically, which is 
a more broad thing that we should talk about at some point, which is that a lot of affixes, not just tyrannical, yeah. fall on both the tank and the healer role and don't really yeah. have much application to DPS players, which I think is a big problem considering DPS players are 60% of your group. And tanks okay. and healers already have a lot to worry about. We actually had a really interesting question on our Discord um, from Law. So it says, instead of removing tyrannical or fortified, would removing uh, would heavily nerfing the HP scaling or removing the HP scaling of tyrannical and fortified be a good change instead? Mobs and bosses would still be dangerous and hit hard, but it would cut down on the raid boss length uh, of dungeon encounters. Do you think that that would be a more reasonable solution as opposed to the HP that is attached to the mobs currently? Well, I think that would just exacerbate what I was just talking about which is that if there was no HP scaling at all, then all of the difficulty of Tyrannical and Fortified would exclusively be on the healer because the only thing that would be changing is how much damage sure. these things deal, right? So then they, I, I don't know. Like currently the way it works with HP scaling is that some of that difficulty is, you know, put, I mean, I wouldn't say difficulty, but the affix affects DPS players in that, you know, they may want to go a more single target heavy build or whatever. But if you exclusively just make tyrannical and fortified damage done increase to those mobs, all of the difficulty of those affixes is going to just be on your healer. That's a good point. That's like well, a really, really I agree mostly, point. but I do think that you're each a level on fortified and tyrannical where DPS and tank players have to start using defensives and places where they wouldn't before because it's fort it's not fortified and you have two bolts targeting you you now have to figure out a way to see that on your ui like whether it be a weak aura or like a sound from big wigs or something and add-on and then you like you, you become a better player because then you know you have to have these things to live those scenarios and then uh like a tank player on a tyrannical boss maybe starts having to use like a full defensive rotation because i'm fortified it would have been really easy otherwise i but would agree yes. To a certain extent with you on that. However, I would also say that 90%, 98% of that would only occur within the very high end community. And that for, I agree with that. for the large, vast majority That's of true, players, yeah. the entirety of the affixes difficulty would be placed on the healer. Yeah. It's interesting. Good point. Affixes in general have this weird thing where kind of no matter what level you're at, a lot of it does fall on the healer because in like the lower lower end groups it's just like oh the dps aren't paying attention and aren't caring and like the healer's just gonna have to heal it right and then the high end groups it's like they everybody's like oh the most efficient global for explosive <laughs> is of course from my healer right so yep. so no matter what you're doing if you're playing healer you're gonna end unfortunately up, that's you're true. either killing the explosives in the high end group or you're like trying to kill them in your low end pugs and then you're healing the people when they are going off right and like either way you're dealing with the affix more than the other it. roles yeah that, it's really that interesting is, to talk issue. to my 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 newer friends to the game than my really casual friends because like an explosive affix is not a healer affix whatsoever for them because the healer has has no idea how to actually heal the bosses so it's all like the rest of the group just scrambling to kill all these orbs and then when you get to the higher levels it's all the healer because they just they've mastered their spec and now they're able to do something else at the same time yeah uh now part of this maybe is just because like necrotic and inspiring were basically two affixes that Holy really shit. didn't hit healers <laughs> at all right like those those affixes necrotic was just like yeah your healer is useless on this right it's all just how the tank plays it right and then uh inspiring was basically also not something the healer sometimes it was well, like okay the healer's taking well, a lot of there's a lot of extra bolts going through or something but that's the usually thing, it was just cases like still... oh firelands portals going off now your group's wiping <laughs> i mean a lot of those were weren't necessarily on the healer but they were on like routing through the dungeon which yeah. is like Holy shit, like, what was really possible with the route? So with, with those coming out of the pool, now every week is like one or two healer affixes, right? And, yes. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, I I think those were good affixes to remove or to, to at least put on vacation for a while. I'm but down for that. I, I do feel bad about the burden landing on healers, and I wonder what ways there are around this. Elsmere, do you have any... Any takes on the, the healer intensiveness of affixes and any possible solutions uh, for them? Well, the best thing that I could say is you, you need to start creating affixes that aren't just negatives. So, for example, yeah. if, you, if you look back at Shadowlands and you look at um, Tormented. Tormented, in general, not a great affix in my opinion. However, there was something that Tormented did 
which was you could pick up one of these uh, one of these things where anytime you killed a mob, you gained X percent of uh, damage, I think, just 1% damage done. Um, and so what would happen is when this, whenever uh, explosive weeks came along, anytime that a DP or like anytime that an explosive spawned, it would be beneficial for DPS players to get them because they would gain a stacking damage buff. Sure. So that's just an example of how you could create an affix system uh, that would incentivize DPS to be uh, contributing to these affixes. Let's, uh, I, I guess we can start talking about rotational affixes and move away from tyrannical and fortify. So yeah, what you just alluded to is kiss curse affix, which I actually see as a topic that's thrown around a lot. Do you think that I, I, I generally, okay, I, I will refrain from what I was about to say. What do you think about kiss curse affixes just as a, a general rule? I think that kiss curse affixes have been a uh, a great a historically great thing for seasonals M plus and for seasonals in general. Okay. I do think that you can go overboard with kiss curse. Um, however, in my ideal world, there would probably be one negative and one positive affix, and then a seasonal kiss curse kind of like awakened or something okay. where it enabled like unique routing. I think that having a, a seasonal affix that enables unique routing is really important. And I think it's something that pretty much everyone has loved anytime that it's come along. You look at the, the two big ones, obviously were uh, awakened and encrypted. encrypted encrypted. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We love that's, those. That's um, the name of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that Having a seasonal affix, like seasonal affixes should always, in my opinion, be designed like that in that they give you unique buffs for doing something else that enables unique routing or enables, you know, you know, healer mana or something, anything at all uh, to, you know, make Mythic Plus more interesting and make routing more interesting and pulls more interesting because you could do a lot of things that you otherwise couldn't with those affixes. Um, so I think that is one. Seasonal affixes should always have something like that included okay. in them. And then two is, uh, what, what was I just talking about? What was the question? Uh, do, you, do you like <laughs> seasonal lost. affixes? Do you think they're a good idea? Oh, kiss you were talking about, with, with regular you're talking about affixes. two rows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're about... <laughs> I, I, I don't think that kiss curse affixes should, should be a big thing in regular affixes. I think oh, if you okay. made every single regular affix a kiss curse affix, yeah. it, it would get really overwhelming to play. And, uh, but I do think that the idea of positive affixes is really good. I think that having some affixes, you know, if you look sure. at um, Diablo, for example, and the riffs and some of the like, you know, buffs that you get within those riffs, uh, whether it's like move speed or zapping enemies nearby or, you know, whatever it might be, you could come up with cool and interesting um, positive affixes. Damn, you look so good in that. Uh, yeah, I forgot to turn the redeem <laughs> off. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, just ignore it. I forgot to return the, turn the redeem off. Um, yeah, I imagine a condo of pylon being in dungeons. Oh, there's a condo of pylon next to this pack. We're just going to delete it. I yeah, I mean, I don't think it should be that heavily influenced. Like, I don't think that any positive power should be so impactful that like you don't need to play your spec correctly and you can just you know walk through with those with those powers however i think adding an element of you know adding some type of positive affix would go a long way in terms of people's perceptions of affixes as well because you you log in every week and you, your first yeah. thought is always what garbage do i have to deal with this week in, in mythic plus it's never like you know what do i get to do what what kind of you know fun stuff do we get to play with do we get move speed? Do we get, you know, casting while moving? Do we get, I don't know, anything at all like that? It doesn't just have to be like strict damage boosts. It, yeah, it could be, be something really cool. that's more interesting. Now, I will say that I guess my initial hesitation with Kiss Curse affixes is like, I think the affix system as a whole right now is already too complex. And I think that like, you know, adding another layer of like, oh, what, what are we going to do on top of this is something that if 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 they do get added, I think that they need to be reimagined, or like we need to completely like overhaul how the affix system is working, which it, it is a possibility. And I think that there should be more experimenting with affixes in M plus. And I agree that that's part of why I would say that I wouldn't want to see Kiss Curse on those regular affixes. But sure. if you had 
one set of positive and one set of negative, you could still have a lot of variation from week to week, but you would remove a lot of the frustrations with, you know, double negative affixes and how they're paired, like bursting grievous on healers or, you know, whatever it might be, sanguine bolstering, or I don't even know. The point is, you would remove a lot of that and you would keep the weekly variation and you would probably even get people excited to push keys or to just even to do keys because they wouldn't be burdened with like, oh, we have these four yeah. affixes that are all going to make our lives miserable, you know? I agree with that. Yeah, super agree with all that. Yeah, I do think Kiss Curse is a good thing for them to use sometimes, although I... They do. There have been a lot of Kiss Curse seasonals over the history, and about half of them sucked, right? Like Prideful, Tormented, Thundering. I would argue Prideful didn't suck. Prideful okay. <laughs> wasn't great for the highest of high end community, but outside of that, I think Prideful was actually pretty cool in that you really felt the buff that you got from Prideful yeah. after getting it, and it felt really impactful and. You know, doing the prideful wasn't always fun, but the routing made it a little bit interesting. Uh, I, I think there were positives and negatives to to prideful. Agree. For me, I think that I think that prideful suffered from the fact that if you messed it up and like you summoned the pride at the wrong time, that was always a mistake. That that felt like it was yeah. it was something yeah. that they should have addressed earlier. And then I think the biggest thing that that impacted prideful too much is like the season went on too long, and so the routes were like really set in stone for months <laughs> you're just yeah. like okay there's no more evolution of how this this affix is going to be working yeah i do think it's a good it's a good thing for a lot of seasonal affixes to get is either kiss curse or route affecting or both although i do think that route affecting seasonals are maybe a little bit less important in a world of new dungeons yeah. every season as well but maybe like for the later seasons in particular especially if we're coming back to you know, Algathar in season four or season five of this expansion or whatever could be a great time to have some sort of route, you know, twisting affics. This might be a hot take, but I thought Shrouded was sick and it affected your route. I thought that was a sick affix. I love yeah. Shrouded, yeah. Shrouded, yeah. Uh, Shroud the problem with Shrouded, maybe, from their perspective, is they gave us, like, 40% haste by the end of the dungeon, and I would understand if they if they don't want to pull a trigger on giving <laughs> us that much power this early in a season or an expansion. But yeah, that affix was phenomenal. I, I liked it, but it was... It, that could be controversial. I know some people did not like that affix. I did favorites. not like it. I just, uh, I didn't love it. I, I was kind of neutral fine. on it. That's fair. That's certainly fair. Part of that was just because Zolgamux was so obnoxious at higher key levels. True. So I think at lower, at lower key levels, I think I would have enjoyed it more. But at like the highest key levels, that, that shit healing like was just yeah. absurd. The just, amount that it healed yeah. was very frustrating. But, I think that and Prival, yeah. Prival had the same downfalls. They just didn't scale super well. Yeah, they were a really good design for the like the middle to low end keys. Okay, uh, cool. We've actually incidentally answered a lot of the questions that were on our list through this, but the next one that we haven't comes from Dark Scream, who says, "How do you feel about affixes and mechanics designed for specific class utilities? For example, purge, soothe, Ooh. bop." I think Mass Dispel could certainly go into this category as well. Uh, and do you feel these tools are distributed fairly, or is there an imbalance that could be solved to make the related mechanics feel better? It's like the curse of spells too. Like that, yeah, that kind of stuff is really annoying if you just like land on a comp and like a weekly key that just doesn't have one of those. Like it is very unfair feeling. Um, but I, I think as we progress, it's gotten a little bit better. Like Evoker, the new class was given a Mass Soothe, which is probably a little too much. Regarding like temples, raging interactions, for example. Yeah, thanks, Ellie Voker. In my opinion, that's actually made it worse, not better. Yeah, because really? it's made it so that like if you don't have an evoker, right, you're just absolutely miserable. Yeah, that's the, true. the difference, the gap in difficulty of an affix between like what comp you have has spiked a lot with um with stuff like that, for example. You know, bursting goes from being a very difficult or medium difficult affix and very difficult in lower keys, especially in pugs where like your DPS aren't holding or are just rolling it. It, it. it goes all the way from very difficult like that to like super, super easy, not even an affix when you have a mass dispel. Same thing with raging. If you have an evoker, then huge mass pulls like Algathar and stuff go from being impossible to being super, super easy and not even an affix at all. And so I think that 
I I definitely don't like uh, having all of these classes have such strong ways of countering these affixes, but like it's only a few of them, right? So, like for example, this may sound biased, but what does Paladin have to counter affixes? To to counter any of these unique affixes? Bubble. We don't have we don't have anything. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Bubble. Three three and a half minute and a five minute bop. I, I saw bot mentioned on that tweet, and I'm like, yeah. for what? Once uh, every five uh, minutes, product. you get to save one person from B res. Once every you 10 can minutes. save fall damage with it, you know. That's yeah, a... fall damage. That's true. I, <laughs> technically, it's a spiteful maybe. Um, uh, Hodge. But... I will say that I'm not sure if people would look at Holy Paladin and be like, oh wow, they're lacking utility. That is not. No, the... I'm, not I'm not even saying Holy Paladin. I'm saying, and I'm not talking about ki like utility in general. I'm yeah. saying certain classes bring nothing to the table to counter these affixes and others bring a ton. Yeah. And to me, that isn't great. Okay, that, that is fundamentally yeah. imbalanced is what you were saying. Okay, I follow. Yeah, I we have mass dispel every 25 seconds right now. Yeah. Well, what are the worst right. offenders? Like mass dispel, mass AOE, uh, DN rage. What, what else yeah. is there that's just like Binded really, shot. really... <laughs> yeah. Um, Ring of Peace for Sanguine. Ring of Beast is, is pretty good. Is very, yeah. very, very strong. But then again, almost every class has some kind of knock now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Trees and Binding were both broken I mean, versus Necrotic. When you consider like the, okay, like you're setting up a temple run, you don't have a battle res, it's Raging Week. You can bring a Restor Druid that brings battle res, Curse to Spell, and uh, Soothe, right? I guess Soothe versus AoE Soothe, so... Maybe it's not as yeah. good as a, as an evoker for that spot, or you could bring like a monk who's bringing none of those things, right? Like, I mean, the the disparities are pretty big. Um, monk, paladin, priest. I mean, monk has, all monk all has of a them spell would... with revival. Yeah, okay. For <laughs> it's just in the healer spot, sure. But like, okay, say it's say it's not the healer spot, right? Like, I don't know. It's um, you're looking at like DPS utility, right? And like, you know, yeah. I think that I think that comps are already super limited in terms of like your flexibility based on just all the buffs that they've been giving yeah, true, certain yeah. specs uh and with needing a battle res needing a lust needing all these different things um yes. I, and and that's like a wildly separate topic that we could go into for a very long time um so i guess let's avoid that tension. yeah <laughs> good god almighty that is one that tilts me i mean mm -hmm. i do like i feel like bursting is more fun given that it's mass dispellable right like when that change got added it's like oh there's more counterplay to bursting now you can single dispel somebody who's about to die from it that's like a big quality i of thought life the change. single dispel was a great change yeah i think the mass dispel is crazy to have one Dwarf. one spec or one class that can completely mitigate an entire affix is yeah. a little bit wild yeah that is crazy and that, the that same thing much. with raging you know it's yeah. the same concept i agree i agree with that all right uh let's see next question we've already answered a lot of this uh from kyle who said why do you think affixes are more noticeably a problem compared to an expansion two ago i think we i think we covered this and then uh the tyrannical fortified stuff we've already talked about as well but i like this part of the question so let's do this one what are your favorite affixes of all time? Oh and I think for me, it's like all seasonals. I don't know about you guys, but for me, it's it's like reaping, awakened, encrypted, shrouded. Pick a non-seasonal. Yeah, so non-seasonals is a lot harder. I got I got my answer. I know mine too. Mm. Overflowing for healers. <laughs> As a holy paladin and legion, that shit was amazing. Bring it back. Really? 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 No, that was definitely sarcasm. If any devs are listening, that was sarcasm. <laughs> I remember I remember the old Zachary Gaming lay on hands me, then have to heal me for five <laughs> seconds consecutively to get the overflowing shield off. That yeah. was cool. Also, our Holy Shocks just crit for like double health pools. So, And then Resto Druids would sit there like, why don't you just reach you? <laughs> Never have any worries about overflowing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't have. I, I don't sure really I have, have a favorite affix. Yeah, mine's probably bursting. Like honestly, I think I think that bursting is is actually a pretty good balance of like, it realistically doesn't slow you down a lot on your route, but it requires you to. There there are so many times where you're either calling, oh, we need to pre press defensives here. I, I think that like defensiving into bursting is actually pretty underrated by a lot of players. But like, oh, we need a defensive into this ten stack of bursting. We can't roll this, otherwise we're going to wipe. And a lot of times, 
there are some affixes where it is a lot in your healer's hands to make sure that they're pre-planning um, where their healing CDs are going to go. But that's one where, like, if your DPS also are not, like, actively engaged with what's going on, if they're just, like, turn their brain off, they will wipe you. And it doesn't it doesn't even matter. Like, your healer can't necessarily save you. That's from part going... of the frustration with bursting, though. Well, I think, Especially I think... in pugs and lower keys. But I think that that's, that's what I like about it, right? Is that, like, sure, it, there, it is frustrating whenever it gets fucked up, but I, I think that, like, the point that you're always in control of it in that way is the part that I like. Yeah. I get that. I agree. But, of I, but, I, but of I would say bursting cool. once they added the ability to dispel. Oh, because, yeah. <laughs> and without, if you took away mass dispel and just made it so that it was single dispellable, then I think bursting would be a great affix. Although I still would argue that it is really not great in pugs. It is, you know, I, I, I watch some VODs and like DPS just don't care at all. Uh, and I, I, that's the rolling <laughs> can be terrifying. And yeah. True. That's true. I, I don't even know if I could pick a favorite affix because it's like we talked about earlier. It's like, which affixes did we dislike the least? Right. <laughs> Instead of like, which are my favorite, you know? <laughs> volcanic. Yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously like volcanic. Volcanic, volcanic, volcanic weeks yeah. are the weeks I have the most fun on. So does that make it a favorite <laughs> affix? Like, That's the one, yep. I mean, that... that I think uh, that speaks to the problem. Yeah. Yeah. That Should probably, I love volcanic? Probably the most boring affix in design is also the one that you have the most fun in when you're doing M+. Which yeah. I, I think speaks volumes to to the issues uh, of affixes. Per personally, actually, now that I'm really thinking about, I I believe that skittish is my favorite affix because it's the one. Okay. That I... mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boomkin speaking. Yeah, Boomkin speaking. <laughs> I've, I've never been I've never Hang been melee from threat. Keep talking, Boomkin speaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you guys hear me? <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to our uh, our tip of the week section. <laughs> then we've got a we got we'll talk about seasonals to end it out. My tip of the week, and this one, uh, somebody sent me this one, but I didn't write down who it was. But I had discovered this independently, and I didn't realize it would be a good tip of the week. But then they sent it to me, and I was like, oh yeah, that's a really good tip of the week. So, if you are a miner or a herbalist, you can mine or herb these these molten nodes that give you a debuff that is a it's a fire dot. Now, that fire dot can be nasty. It does a lot of damage. But you can go into water and you lose it. You have to, if you like start swimming, you lose it. But the funny thing is, if you go swim in lava as well, it counts. You're, it removes your, your debuff. So if you're ever ticking down, you know, you will take a tick of lava damage, but you can go swim briefly in some lava and remove this dot from that as well uh, in a bit of a flavor weirdness thing. So that's my tip of the week for any gatherers out there. Yeah, once again, the most useful tips from Dratnos coming to you live from the Titan Forge podcast. Like to shout out the sponsor tip of the week segment, sponsored by Role Playing Games. <laughs> it is a role playing game that we're playing. Charles, what is your tip of the week? Um, so mine's about the last Tempest channel or mini boss in Ruby Life Bulls. And speaking of like dungeon design where mobs have 40 mechanics, this guy has a lot going on. And I yes. think that one of these things may help a lot of people listening. So for one thing, multiple tank classes can either immune or reflect the damage that he does to the tank. So if you walk in and you spell reflect his first bolt on you, it'll just like hit him for like a million damage over the course of the dot. Same thing with diffuse on Brewmaster or Windwalker if you want to taunt and, and survive it. And then the other thing is on this guy that anytime he gets that Tempest shield that you have to burn through, he's actually getting the shield from the ads that he spawns right before. And so if you have like a mass to spell or a blood elf racial or just any single purges as well, you can just reduce that shield to low amounts or even zero. And so you can kill them like twice as fast. We were doing a key a few hours before the podcast started and we were playing with uh, Billy Azuna on his mage. And he said that he could spell steal about four before he goes in. And he actually split it up two and two. And that reduced the shield by a ton. Like it, it made the shield very trivial to the point where there, it was... It was a very low shield. It was almost impossible to wipe to. And and splitting it up two and two just with the mage spell steals was super sick. Yeah. All right, Elzmir, what is your tip of the week? Uh my tip of the week is regarding healers. Don't huh? just don't play this week. Trust me, your group's gonna ask you to play this <laughs> week. Don't listen to them. Don't fall for it. First and grievous tyrannical, get me out. Dude, this week is a pretty rough combo. 
I got asked to heal keys on Tuesday. That was that's how that's how far down the healer list people are going and getting <laughs> no's from their whispers. I saw Nerf DM getting big IO this week. That's how far down the list they're going, actually. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Tettles, what are we looking at in this uh this clip of the week? Since uh since we have a paladin on. I decided that this week we were going to showcase Turn Evil, as it is a very powerful ability. Asterisk in very specific situations. And I think that one of the most powerful ways is good is Turn Evil on the first boss of Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. If you use Turn Evil, once the add in Shadow Moon Burial Grounds reaches below 30% HP, you're able to execute it with Turn Evil, and it just goes away. Yeah, I didn't know this, but it... Apparently, any undead or aberration summoned mob can be done, right? Elzmir is uh, is what Turn Evil yeah. works on, yeah. So they actually hotfix this halfway through the season. Early in the season, it could be used on any undead aberration uh, once it was below thirty percent health. So you were able to use it on Shaz and Temple, on um, tons of stuff in Knockhood in the third boss area, uh, and then yeah, a ton of stuff in Shadow Moon. But they ended up pop fixing it to make it so that it only work worked on summoned mobs. Uh, so now it only works on the first boss of Shadow Moon Burial Grounds. Uh, so technically, it does work on summoned Bakars in oh. Knockhood, but okay. I would not recommend <laughs> talenting into Turn Evil just for that because they uh, they're just going to die to cleave anyways. Cool. All right. Let's... It's useful maybe in future seasons too. Like maybe, it, it maybe potentially you, you just keep you just keep it in your brain. Think about it in the future whenever you see something that's something you're like, wait a second, can I turn evil this to execute it? Yeah, it would have to be something you summon and like it wouldn't even does turn evil still fear mobs above thirty percent? Yes. That, so you would you if if plague fall came back, you could still use it the same way it was used in plague fall on those bosses. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Interesting. You would potentially be able to execute the add the big ad that spawned from uh stradama oh, wait but that thing's oh, cc stradama, immune right yeah. so it doesn't it, it doesn't oh you're yeah. right yeah, yeah it, it has to be ccable you're right you're right oh Lucky. my gosh so you could probably do it on the first boss right are those aberrations yeah, yeah you could but, still fear those oh you well, could you execute could, the you could execute one, them maybe. but that's only if you know you wanted to yeah actually deal 70 of its health them, yeah. first <laughs> yeah which, true of course nobody did can you do yeah. it to the can you do it to the wall on the no Zool? That, that so, wall has that well that wall has weird CC flags on it. Unfortunately, I've tried and it does not work. Okay, sad. It, because they are like, not CCable and it doesn't have some sort of weird interaction where even though they aren't CCable, they can it can work. Unfortunately, there's there's some, there some things that like work on it. Like you can there was the, really the, the offhand can slow them. The the proc from the offhand embellishment can like slow them and shit. Like that's odd. It, it's weird really? with the CC flagging on that mob, that. yeah. All right. Let's move on to a discussion of the seasonal affix, which IMO, this is uh, the big <laughs> problem, the big the big reason why this season we, we've had so much complaining about affixes is I think thundering really puts a lot of pressure on the other affixes. The thundering quaking interaction, the thundering storming interaction, the interaction between thundering and like many boss encounters and many trash mobs, I think really is, uh, you know, highlights the problems uh, that happen here. And maybe even with a better seasonal affix or with a seasonal affix that didn't do these things, some of these problems wouldn't even really be problems we would notice or problems at all, perhaps. Uh, Elsmer, how do you feel about thundering in specific and seasonals in general as part of the affix problem or solution i think seasonal affixes are great i think that's one of the best things that they've introduced to mythic plus uh and the affix system in general because we didn't have seasonal affixes back in legion they first introduced it with infested which albeit was not the greatest kickoff seasonal affix <laughs> <laughs> Um, Holy shit. <laughs> but one. they they did refine it very well over the years. Um, and I think seasonal affixes are a great way to make Mythic Plus interesting each new season. Now, we do now have new dungeon pools every season, which helps, you know, make seasonal affixes a bit less of a, a crucial role to keeping M Plus fresh every season. However, 
I do still think it's a great part of M plus and should stick around. I especially like that it's always thematic to the season. Um, there's a lot of really good parts of seasonal affixes that I want to see stay. The bad parts are when they create seasonal affixes or affixes in general that counteract what you should be doing uh, naturally. In other words, yeah. affixes like quaking that make you spread out when you're supposed to stack for mechanics or affixes like thundering that make you uh, need to stack when you're supposed to spread out for mechanics or yep. when you get them both at the same time and you're fighting Croth and the circles come out, just good luck figuring out what to do at that point. Um, so I, I think that in general, seasonal affixes are great, but they should avoid creating affixes that force you to do things that are mm -hmm. counteractive to what you should be doing for a mechanic of a, of a fight. I do think that like the impact of seasonal affixes is always something that's interesting to me because they have to worry about balancing a, it has to you have to worry about balancing the seasonal affix itself a lot less because it's just like and with us rotating through completely new dungeons as well that's something that we have to think about even less um because we can just rebalance the timer every single season with the new dungeons and how the the seasonal affix impacts that and so you can give us create things that increase our power crazily but i think the biggest thing and, and this is kind of what thundering misses for me is that it should be fun and i think that yeah that's that's something that's lost on me a lot is like oh thundering is just not particularly fun and and more often than not it's neutral at best and at worst i've wiped on a boss because of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah the problem for me with thundering is like the when you're thinking about an, an, a seasonal instead of like oh how do i squeeze this for as much as it's worth with thundering it's always like oh the right way like this is a, a problem that can happen the correct answer is just clear two seconds earlier, right? Is to squeeze less value out of thundering, less and less value out of it, right? And like that feels really yeah, bad I mean, for me. To, to really properly play thundering, you have to look at your weak aura that shows mm -hmm. you your duration on thundering, and then you have to compare that timer to your add-on that shows the mechanic on the boss that's coming up in nine seconds, and see if you can actually use the seasonal affix or not. Like that's way too complicated. Yeah, and I also think that a big problem. So. Let's compare Thundering to a similar affix-ish uh, with Prideful, for example. Okay. Both of them gave you damage buffs in exchange for having to do something that wasn't as fun, right? Um, the, the thing that made Prideful interesting, there were a few things. Um, first off, it was a unique thing that you, you had to do that you had to fight on its own. And you had to time it via routing and stuff and you know plan when it was going to spawn. Uh, whereas Thundering is completely random. So with Prideful, you could plan out getting your damage buffs, where you wanted those damage buffs, what you wanted to use those damage buffs for. With Thundering, you're not just going to sit and wait for the Thundering timer to go down, you know? <laughs> you could. <laughs> I mean, you technically could, but 99.9% .9 of the time, you're just going to completely ignore it and just keep going about the dungeon the, the same way that you always would, um, which, I, which I don't love. And then another thing that I don't love is the reason that Prideful Damage Buff was so fun was because it was really impactful and you you actually felt the buff the same way that you felt when you got the Ur buff um, or you know any any of the major seasonal affix buffs that we've gotten before. And I know they wanted to make seasonal affixes a little less impactful this season and and this expansion. However, I think you've lost what made seasonal affixes interesting, which is like. Do you ever feel the 30% damage buff that you get from Thundering? Like, I know 30% is decent, oh. but it only lasts like 10 seconds. And most of that Dude. time, you're planning out when or how you need to clear stuff anyways. So you don't even get to enjoy that damage buff. So uh, yeah. to me, you don't really get to feel the, the benefits of Thundering. You only are stressed out about the downsides. I think it's wild that you said that it's too impactful. I actually think that the affix is not impactful enough, and, it's, and it comes off like another affix. Like it, it comes off literally like similar to quaking. Well, I think no, this I, affix I, to me feels like it is literally just a reskinned version of quaking in terms of its impact over the course of the whole entire dungeon. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't mean to say that thundering is not impactful. I meant to say that Blizzard told us when they were uh, coming out with thundering at first okay. that they wanted thundering to be less positively impactful. They didn't want to give it massive buffs the way that they have in previous seasons with prideful and stuff um which is why you didn't see as significant a buffs from thundering yeah um but i think the downside is that even though the positive 
side was less impactful. The negative side was arguably significantly more impactful than than any of our previous seasonal affixes. The downsides to not doing it properly was extremely significant. Um, and some of that just has to do with being CC'd. In my opinion, no affix should ever put you in a situation where you can't outplay it, um, even after something has gone wrong. So things like dropping Sanguine on a mob that is immobile, for example. I get that you're supposed to be able to like counterplay it proactively, um, but sometimes things go wrong. And and when there is just no counterplay, even if, you know, let's say Thundering, when Thundering blew up, it did twice as much damage as it currently does, but yeah. you weren't stunned, there could be a way that you could live. You know, you could manage to get your way out of the situation. You could pop a defensive, you could pop a health pot, you could, you know, commit some CDs from your healer, something like that. But currently, yeah. if if anyone messes something up, you're screwed. Like if, if you get a bad overlap with quaking on Croth and there's thundering going out and you can't clear because you can't stack. And then by the time you can clear, it's too late. Like there is just no outplay unless you were to clear thundering 12 seconds ago, like when it first spawned on you. And to I mean, that's, me, that's a big downside yeah. to thundering. The stun was fine. I think that I think the dying 100 to 0 part is on is like the hardest part by far. Okay, I guess technically if you still got stunned but couldn't die from <laughs> yeah, it, then yeah. that would work too. But I, yeah, I mean, I, I think mean, I th that I think Elsmere's right. You could just remove the stun and leave the dot and that's hard enough like that just presents sure, yeah, extra it's also challenge fine too. Up. <laughs> yeah, the dot does do like 150% of your health bar over 6 seconds like Yeah. It, yeah. It is uh like it's not messing around. You get stunned as the tank player, and there is no way that anyone could clear you, and they they just messed up by not clearing each other. You're just gonna die no matter what. Like yeah, you can't parry, you can't dodge, can't block, whatever. You just die. So um, yeah, I think I, the stun was definitely the most awful part of that aspect. Yeah, and not to mention like the like ten to twenty instances in these dungeons where you can finish combat with something, the target dies, but then you're stuck in combat for like five more seconds, like the Fenrir first phase. You get thundering there. You can't even use thundering. You just, yeah. you just waste the whole instance of it, you know? Yeah. That always feels terrible. Which, again, has to do with the difference between prideful and this is, like, it's t so random that sometimes you just completely waste it, which really sucks. Um, you know, and then you never really get to fully enjoy it because when you do have it, you're stressed about having to clear it. So, yeah, I kind of miss having, a, having an affix that you can plan and think about a little bit more rather than this yeah. just like let's hope that it's decent basically kind of the thing. only thing that you get to do with it is like grief torch into it right like maybe if you're good you're you're holding grief torch 20 seconds for a thundering and that like that channel is short enough and it's like okay cool i i got my grief torch into thundering but like you know 15 seconds where you need to clear within the first five or ten you're not you're only getting a couple of globals into that it, they've got to be big ones for you to feel happy about the buff i don't know yeah, that happens to me a lot. I'm like holding Grief Torch for the Thundering coming up to get the 30% damage buff on it, which is like the best case scenario for using Thundering is Trinkets, by the way. And then like right as Thundering comes out, something happens to where a DPS has to stack on me and I lose the buff anyway. And it's like, well, yeah, there goes that's been happening to me a lot recently because uh, I started playing a Evoker and the staff is like a huge source of damage for a single target. Yeah. And yeah. I will often hold that for Thundering. But then when the Thundering comes out, like you said, like something will happen. I'll have to be dodging a mechanic or something where, you know, I have to stand still with when I channel the staff. So, and then by the time I can use the staff, thundering is just gone or I had to, I had to clear it for Dennis, X, Y, or Z reason. Did you ever finish that math project that you were doing, trying to figure out how much damage you would gain over the course of a whole entire dungeon from thundering? It is currently, I'm currently every six minutes refreshing a Google script because that's how long a Google script can run for to like iterate through this API call. So soon soon tm like next two weeks or something i'll have uh <laughs> okay do you have any, gone through do you have any data so far so like an average so far not very much the thundering nowhere close to the five percent health buff that comes with it is yeah. how much damage you're getting out of it uh but i don't know yet like what the best group in this sample have done for instance this is a, a thirty thousand report sample that i'm turning through Thir thirty thousand reports yeah. that may oh have been God. too much <laughs> you're gone <laughs> I'm going 200 at a time. I can do 200 every every click of my 
my script, Why so... You need to automate that. Yeah. Why can't you get somebody a... to fucking automate the script, bro? Well, Pretty you can, there are ways to automate it, apparently, but they're kind of annoying. It's easy to get just the, click button. Get, get that Starship guy to fix it and figure it out for you. <laughs> bro, I could probably <laughs> automate it for you. Else you could probably automate it. I'm, I read a thing about how, but like, I'm already almost done. I, I just need to do another 40 <laughs> clicks. <laughs> it's easy. I just tap in every five minutes. I've, I've been doing it during the show. You, you guys haven't noticed, but... <laughs> I've nearly got my whole spreadsheet uh, built. <laughs> but yeah, it's got it's got other stuff in there as well. I've got um how many times people get stunned and then how many times they've died two, five, or ten seconds after that stun. And uh a quick look through, often the numbers are the same. Like often anybody who gets stunned has the same number of deaths coming from that stun. It's very very rare to not see deaths uh, associated with the stuns. Yeah. 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 But... Especially Which is kind of wild to up. think that yeah. we have we have a we have an affix right now that literally just kills people <laughs> if they don't do it perfectly. I, I have a question. Elsmir in a super coordinated group, you you run all, most of the time just w with the groups of people that you play with or that you know uh that you know aren't likely to mess up thundering that are high coordination and stuff like that that use comms a lot. How many times a week do you think that you wipe the thundering even still with um, that being the case? Too many. Too many is the answer. Anything more than one is too many, and it's definitely more than one. It's, uh, I'd say for every, like, ten keys that we do, we mess up Thundering once. Which, which in a high key means that the key is instantly depleted. Like, yep. you, you fuck yeah. up Thundering once, it's over, pretty much. Unless you're in a court or a Shadowman. In which case, you can fuck it up about six more times and still be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say, I, I'd go... As far as to say, like more than half of my high keys have been depleted to thundering not being cleared instead of like the actual dungeon mechanics. And I think that goes back to our biggest point in this episode is like this affix is way too negatively impactful and not enough positively impactful compared to what we've liked in the past. Bro, we watched three teams this weekend get stunned by thundering. An MDI group B. An MDI. M MDI. Yeah. <laughs> like, these are the people that shouldn't be getting stunned by thundering the most. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean it's shit. it's it's one of those things where you're pulling nine packs of mobs, and you're dealing with like a very very coordinated set of stops, and you also have to do a perfect rotation on your damage and your defensives, and then you also have to clear thundering, and it's like. But they've also that's run extremely difficult. They've also run those so many times that they actually know the thundering timing for each pull. Yes. Like, and yeah. it's moderately planned out, so. To a certain extent, it should even be less of a concern because, like that, that should already be mapped out, basically. Well, but and it then, still happens. But then yeah. you have one mistake, which is which is wild. And your thundering timing is off for the entire rest of the run, and then it's all yep. new from that point yeah. forward. All right, I think that's a pretty good coverage of our our affix discussion so far. Was there anything, any part of your? I don't know, affix manifesto that you uh you didn't get the chance to to soapbox about Elsmere, anything any uh like subtopic of it that you wanna you wanna cover we, here? We pretty much covered everything. Alright, nice. Glad uh glad we got through it all. Tettles trail, anything else about affixes? Uh any other any any points that we missed that you guys like uh like would like to cover as well? Trell, you first. Oh, uh, I mean I, I think we covered everything. We did a right, really nice. good job today, but I think we all agree that just something could give way to be less impactful from Apex as a, as a whole. Uh, I think we all agree that one rotational row or or some mix of the two rows could go, you know, and just put the rest onto one. That would be nice. Settles? Uh, I, I don't, again, I don't have anything about Apex. I think we covered most of it. I do want to shout out everybody who sent in questions and stuff. We built... A lot of the show notes based off of the questions themselves, it wasn't necessarily something that we like had an extended Q&A and stuff like that, but the, the show notes themselves were built off of the questions. Yes. And so just know that like even if we if we didn't read out your question, we looked at your questions in, in some capacity. A lot of them are a lot of them are in this uh document as well, but we had basically already covered them by the time we like got to them. So I didn't pull them up, but thank you to everybody who who put a question under the uh 
under the tweet. Also, thank you to everybody who put a meme question as well under the tweet. <laughs> uh, which was like 60% of them. There was a I... large amount of memes there, yes, which uh, were very good. There was something about a Cincinnati hot. I don't even know what that means. Just don't ask. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's about it then for our, our main topic. Elismir, where can people uh, people find you, find your content? What sort of what sort of stuff uh, is yours on the internet? Uh, if you go to Twitch, it's just Elismir underscore gaming. Oh my God. You can find me uh, live there. And then you can find all my socials from there as well. Yeah. Also creator of the world-renowned Wings is Up. Wings is Up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wings is uh, up baby definitely recommend anybody in any group just start adding dot com after you if you're like hey you know combustion's ready combustion's up dot com just start saying dot com at the end of that that's uh <laughs> <laughs> that's been been uh something that's improved my quality of life and keys greatly but yeah it's a phenomenal uh holy paladin guide so yeah thank you for thanks for coming on the show we're gonna quickly thank the supporters over on the patreon and then uh, since our Q&A was already in here, we will be all Dunsies. So, uh, and Tettles and Trell, I'm glad you guys haven't lost power yet. But uh, Oh, it's a miracle, man. It's a miracle. <laughs> 80 yeah. mile per hour winds out there. I keep looking to like make sure my house is All right, okay. well, <laughs> we'll blaze through the, the Patreon names real quick, and then uh, everybody can, can go and, and shelter, shelter in place. So they are. Paul, get in, loser. We're going shopping. We need more holy shocks. Never nude. Ja, king of skills. Dratnus of dino pillow. Chromed. Trekkie. Chewy. Wings is up is short for well interactive niche guide specialized in savvy <laughs> understanding of paladin, <laughs> um, but it's also why I've never gotten solid IO score using paladin. Oh, wow! Holy shit. Damn! <laughs> Good lord! That was a mayor last week. Owned. Zimbex X, Salty Seti, Necris, Sinmora, Tanktil, Nevuk, Evie, Unholy DKs rise up. No trick. I forgot I was subbed here. Dimat. Tettles is Ottoman, Rework Mistweaver, Alcar still owes me pizza, Nyx, Beware the Cement Truck Backing Up Caster Curse. <laughs> cement Truck Back Up. Oh, yeah, that was in the Cement the Gaming. Cement, cement Gaming, yeah. yeah. Group B. Um, okay, where was I? I lost my place. Gallic, Brusif, Dratno Shards Abyss, Tettles is Saucy Grin, and Sanity, Xena. Uh, Rogue is now good enough for prog, still bad enough to be sat for SLG, bless up. Red Color, YouTube.com slash Workbringer, Alphabet Soup, Druid Friends of Evolved Gaming, Number one, Simsky for Trelsky. Lurka still manages to make raid in key groups while being on the other side of the planet. What's your excuse? Milk, 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 milk. Sife, Pone, Windwalker Monks deal with nerfs by rolling with the punches. They nerfed the meta while my friends quit. The Marsh Hare, Fail Strider Svar. As a longtime Holy Paladin main, I would like to dedicate this name reading to the god of Holy Paladins, Elzmir. This man elevates the entirety of the Holy Paladin community with his amazing site, wingsisup.com, and with his incredible dedication to our spec. Without him, I would be a significantly worse player than I am today. Dude, I was waiting for a meme all the way through that. Was yeah, I was me. waiting for the, yeah. the shoot to yeah, drop. that was too wholesome. Yeah. So fucking long. <laughs> Big head, small brain. Uh, Narnar TV is back and ready to press Starfall. Agitar Juniper. Thank you for resetting my Manic Grief Torch. What does the DK say to the Lich King by the first light of dawn? Good morning, boss. And it's morning spelt the other way. Rat Run. It's better to face these kind of things with sense of poise and rationality. Shansi, Good that song. moment when your tank says, now where's my ranged at during Jade Serpent Dragon Boss and bricks your key. Is that a thundering moment? That That's gotta about? be a thundering thing. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't 100% understand. I think it's oh, about okay. Yulon's breath. <laughs> Baiting a Yulon's breath, I get it. Oh. Or, you know, you have, a, you have a Boomkin player that just walks toward where the tank is standing at, at the last second and does the breath. That was, he's got that a pre place. Happen. He's got a pre place positioning for uh, when the door opens. Of course. And finally, feral druids in the MDI. You've got to be kidding me. Thank you all <laughs> for the support. Uh, thank you again to Elsevier for coming on. We will see you guys not next week. No show next week, but we will be back in two weeks after the MDI last stand, which Trell is competing in. Good luck, Trell. Good luck, Trell. Good luck, Trell. Hey,